and elect I'm here to give a study this morning and the study will be he shall come as an eagle and I'm going to read uh, Hosea chapter 8 just verse 1 for right now set the trumpet to thy mouth he shall come as an eagle against the house of the Lord because they have transgressed my covenant and trespassed against my law set as in heaven a clear sound he shall come as an eagle the Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far from the end of the earth as swift as the eagle uh, swift as an inhabiting quickly with great speed an eagle will soar upward and then rapidly descend down on his prey and i'm just going to read uh, in revelation 12 um, verses 7 through 9 and there was war in heaven michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought in his angels and prevailed not neither was their place found any more in heaven and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and satan which deceiveth the whole world he was cast out onto the earth and his angels were cast out uh, with him and then i'm going to read daniel 8 um, just th uh, three and four And I, then I lifted up my eyes and saw, and behold, there stood before the river a, a ram which had two horns, and had the and the two horns were high, but but one was higher than the uh, than the other, and the higher came up last, horns as in power, one higher than the other. And I saw the ram pushing westward and northward and southward, so that no beast might stand before him. Neither was there any that can deliver out of his hand, but he did according to his will and became great. The, um, the um, American continents of the North and South America together, they make up the most of the land in the Earth's Western Hemisphere. As for the lightness of their faces, they had four. They had the face of a man, the face of a lion on the right side, and they had the face of an ox on the left side. They had four. They had the face of an eagle. This being the four faces of the cherubims, face of a man. The cherubims are the angelic beings involved in worship and praise of God. So he drove out the man, this being the flesh man, and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. They will protect his throne, four faces, but one purpose. They magnify the holiness and power of God and protect it. Prior to his rebellion, Satan uh, was a cherub, a protector of his throne. And I'm, I'm just going to read in Ezekiel 28, just verses... Um, 13 and 14 and that has been in the Eden the garden of God every precious stone was thy covering the sardis the topaz and the diamond and the beryl the onyx and the jasper the sapphire the emerald and the carbuncle and gold the workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thy was created Thy art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thy was upon the holy mountain of God. Thy has walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. And then I'm going to go over to Ezekiel um, chapter 10, verse 1. And I looked, and behold, in the firmament that was above the head of the cherubims, were, there appeared over them as it were a sapphire stone, as the appearance of the likeness of a throne. Then I looked, that is after um, the ceiling in chapter 9. This will open up that supernatural realm. God's children will be sealed with truth for this event. The appearance of a sapphire stone. Sapphire in Hebrew means to listen and repeat. Um, repeat. Uh, it's associated with royalty. Uh, the second uh, stone on, in the second row of the high uh, priest's breastplate. Um, it's used to compose the second foundation in New Jerusalem that is built by God, not man. And it's above the head of the cherubim, as it were a sapphire stone, as in the appearance of a throne. And then two, and he spoke unto the man clothed with linen and said, Go in between the wheels, even under the cherub, and fill thy hand with coals of fire from between the cherubims and scatter them over the city. And he went in my sight. This city being Jerusalem, Jerusalem being a condition of truth prophetically, um, with uh, coals of fire. Therefore, if any thine ever, every hunger, feed him, and if he thirst, give him drink. For in so um, day that thy shall heap coals of fire on his head, as to mark his head with truth. And then I'm going to 
read in Ezekiel 9, um, 1 and 2, And he cried also in my ears with a loud voice, saying, Calls them that have charge over the city to draw near, even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lieth towards the north, and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. And one man among them was clothed with linen, with a writer's inkhorn by his side. And they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. Um, and that brazen altar I'm going to read of in um, Isaiah 6, 1 through 7. And in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. He's high and lifted up above the cherubims, and above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six uh, wings, with twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly, these being the uh, cherubims. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. They, are, they praise the Lord and protect his throne. And the, and the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. When you see him, as you recognize him, perceive him, you will reverence him. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this has touched thy lips, and thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sin is purged. And then this will be the sealing of truth. Um, it is God that will clean us um, to make us um, holy and uh, fit for his dwelling. The, the coals are from his, the altar. Ezekiel 9, 3 and 4. And the glory of the God of Israel was gone up from the cherub whereupon he was to the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the rider's ink worn by his side. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. They stand at the right on uh, right side. Um, the right um, hand side is um, is the spiritual power, our um, high priest Melchizedek, that sits on the right hand of God, um, being those coals, um, of the, that being the throne. And then we're going to go over. I'll come back there, but we're going <coughs> we're going to go over to John. On chapter 21 verse 1 and after these things Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias on this wise showed uh, he himself uh, this is when he's going to show himself as in Yahweh and there were together Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus and Nathaniel of Cana and Galilee and the sons of Zebedee and Simon Peter said unto them I go a fishing and they said unto him, We also go with thee. And they went forth and entered into a ship immediately. And that night they caught nothing, because um, we are children of the day. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. When the morning has now come, this being that um, prophetically, when he comes as that morning star, this being the la this will be the last of the five months, being the um, the Lord's day uh, the first two and a half months is the Elijah ministry uh, that is when um, you will be brought that bread that angels food that that will bring that seal in to prepare you for his arrival when he comes in in the spirit to this earth to inhabit the vessels he chooses to speak through they will have those live coals upon their mouths and he touched my mouth with the hot coal and said with this hot coal touched your lips, your guilt is taken away and your sins erased. That is because you will be inhabited by the spirit of Yahweh who must enter into a pure vessel. They do not know it was Jesus because they have not received the meat yet. The meat will come at the second half of the five months. Then Jesus says unto them, Children, have you any meat? And they answered, No. 
And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and you shall find, and they cast thereof, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Cast the net on the right side of the ship, as in vessel, and you shall find. Um, now the cherubim stood on the right side of the house when the men went in, and the cloud filled the inner court, the right side being our high priest uh, in the heavens that sits on the right hand of God. That being our right, there's two sides of man. We are to pull from the right side of our vessels, that being the spiritual side of our vessels. Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved uh, said unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girt his fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked, and then cast himself into the sea. He being John, John meaning Yah is gracious, that leans upon his bosom as in a heart womb, uh, he said, It is the Lord, as in Yahweh. He's recognizing Yahweh. Uh, we are not to be naked. We are to have his covering, his priestly robe. Uh, the sea prophetically will be the people's multitudes and nations and tongues that the beast will rise up out of. That's where the judgments will take place. That is what we are being anointed for. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were f not far from land, but it were 200 cubics dragging, dragging the net um, with fishes. God's elect are little in number. And soon then as they come to the land, they saw the fire of coals there and fish laid thereon and bread. As soon as they came to the land, the land being of dry, uh, the dry land, um, the flood um, of the flood waters of lies and deceit of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. They were able to see those uh, fire of coals and the fish laid thereon in the bread. Coals representing of the truth from the altar of God where our high priest sits on the right hand of God and the fish being that meat and the bread, angel's food of the manna. 10. And Jesus says unto them, Bring of the fish which you have now caught. And Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes, a hundred and fifty and three. And for all there was so many, yet was not the net broken. And Jesus says unto them, Come and dine. And none of the disciples does ask him, Who art thou? Knowing that it was the Lord. They knew it was the Lord Yahweh. He has revealed himself now as their high priest. Then Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them and fish uh, likewise. This being um, his um, feeding, um, the feeding by the high priest Melchizedek himself. And then we're going to go back to Hosea 8 verse um, 1. Set the trumpet to thy mouth. He shall come as an eagle against the house of the Lord because they have transgressed my covenant and trespassed against my law. Uh, we are to warn God's children of their transgressions, listening to man over God. That being um, of the sea, the people's multitudes, nations, and tongues that the beast will rise up out of. That is where the judgments will take place. And then on to, and Israel shall cry unto me, um, my God, we know thee. And, and three, Israel has cast off the thing that is good. The enemy shall pursue him. The thing that is good, I'm just going to go and read in on Genesis 1, verses um, 3 through 5. And God said, let there be light as in spiritual illumination, spiritual intellect, and there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. Um, they were casting off the thing that is good that is his light his spiritual intellect his the spiritual illumination uh, as when we were of the first day so you will not be sealed with the truth um, to prepare you for that enemy uh, that eagle which will swiftly come upon us when he comes it will happen swiftly for and they set up kings but not by me they have made princes, and I knew it not. Of their silver and their gold have they made them idols, that they may be cut off. It is God who will set up and take down kings. We are to always seek his guidance. In God we trust to make us a great nation. But now we look to man, man's government, um, 
and to trust over God's perfect government and righteousness. And he's angry about it. And we're going to go over to um, Ezekiel 32, starting with verse 1. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down on the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods, which shall go before us. The angel of the Lord is to go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we want not what is become of him. Um, prophetically, uh, will be the time of the withdrawing of the Holy Spirit. That being when the four winds are released. Uh, that will bring the famine of truth. Uh, it is throughout the land. It will only be in those that are sealed with truth. Behold, the days come, says the Lord, that I will send famine in the land, not a famine of bread nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Moses meaning drawn out of the waters as those flood waters of lies and deceit into truth. Moses representing of our high priest Melchizedek of the Spirit. But they gathered unto Aaron, Aaron being of the earthly high priest, make us gods. We are to have one God, and his name is one. In the last five months, there will only be one God speaking. Um, that will be our high priest Melchizedek that will be speaking through the two witnesses. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day, there shall be one Lord, and his uh, name one. Um, they said... Um, make us gods um we are as in many speaking for god many saviors um that and they um make us gods which shall go before us um that angel is uh, as in a messenger a spiritual messenger will go is to go before us uh, preparing the way uh showing us the way Moses, uh, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt. Uh, Egypt, um, symbolically, um, prophetically, will be of the perverse spirit. That being that man uh, in Ezekiel 10 that was clothed in linen that had the um, writer's inkhorn in his hand. And then um, two, and Aaron said unto them, break off the golden earrings, which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people break off the golden earrings, which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand and fashioned it um, with a graving tool after he had made it a molten calf. And they said, these be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Uh, he received them at their hand. In Ezekiel 10, verse 7, And one cherub stretched forth his hand from between the cherubims unto the fire that was between the cherubims, and took thereof, and put it into the hands of him that was clothed with linen, who took it and went out. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it, and Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord, these being the false gods, as in saviors. Um, that will be prophetically um, of the mask and the vaccines of that man's savior. And they rose up early in the morning, and they offered their burnt offerings, and they brought peace offerings, on, and the people sat down to eat and drink, and they rose up to play. And then we're going to go um, back to Hosea 8, verse 6. For from Israel was it also, the workmen made it, therefore it is, it is not God, but the calf of Samaria shall be broken in pieces. Um, Manasseh prompted idol worship, as well Manasseh will once again. Uh, this being the seed of Satan, that evil embodied by a totalitarian uh, system over Jesus Christ, embodied, um, Jesus Christ embodied by freedom, self-ownership of the individual, and um, Pergamus, Satan's throne and dwelling place. Satan has to do with totalitarian rule that which aims to turn um, humanity into a machine that convinces people that they have to suppress their individuality and blindly obey orders that come from outside of them. 
we are to be one in Christ Jesus with no earthly superiors and with direct link of communication with the Creator. In Christ, our orders come with DNA of the seed of the stars, not the seed of the serpent. Um, Asclepius, the snake intertwined staff known as the rod of Asclepius, um, tracing back to the Greek god of healing. When the Israelites were brought into the wilderness, being fed of the bread of heaven, uh, the angels' food, they said, um, we detest this uh, wretched food. And the Lord sent them fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. And we're going to read of that in Numbers 21, <coughs> starting with verse 7. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed uh, for the people, Moses being that intercessor on the earth, prophetically being the two witnesses. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that every one that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live, this being a fiery serpent. Fiery, fiery is symbolic of the cerebums, the, the living creature. The cerebums being the living cre uh, creatures with the appearance of them as um, it were a sapphire stone, as the appearance of the likeness of, a, of the throne. Uh, when they looked up on this fiery serpent, they are actually looking upon the throne of God. And then nine. And, and Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. And Moses made a serpent of brass, serpent as, to, um, to, as in a hiss. Uh, that if a serpent had bitten any man. In verse 8, it is every one, as in one in Christ Jesus. Uh, this is flesh man, this being the flesh, um, this being the flesh man, you are um, to live um, by, with the, to fleshly live or to spiritually live. The outer manning, outer man um, healing or the inner man healing. King, King Hezekiah, Manasseh's father, he did what was right in the sight of the Lord. Uh, he he um, removed the high places and broke down their pillars and cut down the Asherah and he broke in pieces the brazen serpent that Moses had made. Um, his, Ezekiel um, named it uh, Nehash, Nehashton, um, meaning piece of brass. It has no power. It is a piece of brass. A serpent wrapped around a rod for healing, the rod being to lead and also for correction. The people will be led to this rod for physical healing. This rod traces back to that Greek god of healing, Asclepius. The tribe of Dan had seafaring commerce with Greece, this tribe being the serpent, by the way, an adder in the path that biteth the horse's heel. So that is, um, a rider shall fall backward. The rod, a Asclepius, known as the um, only true symbol of medicine, the healing of the flesh man. If you just listen to me and do what I say, you will not die in the flesh. Uh, Genesis 3, 1 through 5, uh, you will be as gods, not the one God. And I'm just going to flip over there and read that. And now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, has God said you shall not eat every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die, for God does know that in the day you eat thereof, and your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Uh, you will be as gods, not that one God. Um, Manasseh, meaning um, meaning forgetfulness. He rebuilt these shrines his father uh, destroyed, and he erected altars to Baal and made a sacred post um, of, King, of King Ahab, which had done. 
this comparison of Manasseh to uh, the northern um, King Ahab um, is, a is a damning indictment of the southern ruler for their uh, future to worship in Jerusalem alone uh, the northern kingdom built um, territories um, at Dan the norner northerners were punished with exile and Manasseh's heirs will meet the same fate in the future they will go into Babylon they will turn once again to As Asclepius the snake that is intertwined uh, uh, around the staff the leader of man, the healer of man, the, the piece of brass. Brass can look like gold, but, but in purity they are not gold. They are not. Gold is a precious metal, rare in nature, known for its resistance. You can, sh uh, you can shape it without uh, damaging the metal. Gold is found in nature, a free metal. Brass is not a pure metal, like gold. It looks similar to gold, but it's fake. It will stain and it will rust. It is man-made, not freely given from nature. It is by faith you will be healed. By looking upon that fiery serpent, the altar of God, that brazen altar that has the live coal, symbolic of truth, the rod of the serpent is lifted up. Manasseh meaning forgetfulness, forgetting of their first love, their Savior, Jesus Christ. But, um, but instead, looking towards man to, to heal them, to save them. The serpent that has the hiss that will bite them, that being that prick, that bite of the serpent is poison. You will be soon be led to these two poles. One with the fiery serpent, representing of the throne of God to receive um, spiritual healing to your soul as the gold that never decays and rots or deteriorates or the pole with the serpent of brass that will save the flesh man, that man savior. He is coming, this being that second part of the beast um, uh, system when the man savior comes in revelation 13 um, 11 i'm going to go over to that and i beheld another beast coming up out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb and he spake as a dragon two horns as in power like a lamb not the lamb but like and he spake as a dragon because they are the same entity as but different roles this role he is coming as the savior Asclepius. and he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed this being the laws that the first beast has set up these laws came when the star wormwood fell uh, Revelation 8, and I'm going to read of that. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. It's not the lamp, but it burns as it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers, and upon the fountains of waters, and the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. Um, wormwood means bitterness, but it also means a calamity. A calamity is an event that causes great and often sudden disaster, distress, destruction. We know destruction means Apollyon, Abaddon, for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. This sudden disaster, distress, destruction that came upon them is the coronavirus. Corona meaning crown. Crown being a symbol, uh, 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 being a... Uh, a circular headdress worn by a monarch as a symbol of authority that being the laws that they have set up as, um, as a savior the deadly um, it will look like it um, in Revelation 13 12 it looked like it will receive a deadly wound but the deadly wound it was it was healed um, it will seem like their power will be ended over the people um, by by the laws that they have set up as, as the healer of man. And he doeth great wonders, so he maketh fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of the men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of these miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power uh, to give unto 
life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he calls us all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. This being the mark, as in the badge of servitude. Here is wisdom, let him that have understanding count the number of the beast, for it's the number of a man, and his number is 603 score and 6. Uh, it's a number of a man, Ezekiel 10, verse 8, this being the form of a man's hand under their wings. Not as in verse war, uh, 1, over them, but under their wings. And um, then um, we're going to go back to Hosea um, verse 9. Well, verse uh, 10 Ezekiel, um, let me let me just go back to Ezekiel 10 and read um, those verses, um, verse 8, verse 8 and 9. And there appeared in the cherubims the form of a man's hand under uh, their wings. This man's hand, this is a form of a man's hand under the wings, not as in verse 1, over them, but under their wings. And when I looked, and behold, the four wheels by the cherubims, one wheel by one cherub, and another wheel by another cherub, and the appearance of the wheels was the color of burl stone. Burl being the fourth stone that adored, adorned Lucifer in order to make him appear radiant and beautiful. A wheel and a wheel, meaning you have different influences, um, reason, um, actions, which make a situation complicated, difficult to understand, as in Babel. The fours within the natural world, uh, the elements, seasons, and cardinal directions, um, human um, kind understanding of the world, which um, is limited uh, over the spiritual man. And as for their appearances, they four had one likeness as, a, as a, um, if a wheel had been in the midst of a wheel, uh, that being that confusion of Babel. And when they went, they went upon their four sides, and they turned not as they went, but to the place whether the head looked, they followed it, and they turned not as they went. They followed without even looking, just blindly believing. And their whole body and their backs and their hands and their wings and their wheels were full of eyes round about even the wheels that they had four had. Eyes being the windows of the soul. They looked to as their savior. Uh, and as for the wheels, it, it was cried unto them in my hearing, O wheel, and every one had four uh, horse four faces the first face was the face of a cherub and the second face was the face of a man and the third the face of a lion and the fourth the face of an eagle in every one that being one uh, with the one cherub as in the seraphim with the throne over their heads as in verse one not under as in verse eight face of a man that being that man clothed with fine linen the lion being the standard of Judah, the eagle being symbolic of his protective care over his people. They are free to exercise the way of the eagle in the sky as in heavenly protection. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. We are to wait, not as they did in Numbers 21. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. When we see an eagle in flight soaring, uh, as in um, visible um, air currents, we can be reminded that the Creator who supplies the eagle's um, strength will also strengthen those who call upon His name. The four cherubims and the altar above them, we are to look to for our healing. Satan will imp um, well, Satan will impersonate uh, with his cherubims the form of a man's hand under their wings, be under his shadows. And I'm going to go over to Judges uh, 9, um, verses 8 through 15. And the trees went forth on a time to anoint a king over them, and they said unto him, 
said unto the olive tree, Reign thou over us. But the olive tree said unto them, Should I leave my fatness, whereby me they honor God and man, and go to pr be promoted uh, over um, the trees? Olive, uh, the olive um, represents the truth that, that the virgins are to have in their lamps, waiting for their bridegroom. Uh, and the trees said to the fig tree, uh, that being the, um, the tree of life, and the trees said to the fig tree, Come thou and reign over us. Um, the fig tree um, being the hidden ones in the garden, uh, they used the fig tree to cover um, their um, to cover themselves, uh, their spiritual nakedness of shame. Um, the fig tree being the um, tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Satan's children are the hidden ones. They will always work behind the scenes. And the trees said to the fig tree, Come thou and reign over us. But the fig tree said unto them, Should I forsake my sweetness and my good fruit, and go to be promoted over the trees? Then said the trees unto the vine, Come thou and reign over us. And the vine said unto them, Should I leave my wine, which cheereth God and man, and go to be promoted over the trees? The, uh, the vine is Jesus Christ, and the wine is his blood. <coughs> Then said all the trees unto the bramble, Come thou and reign over us. Bramble is the thorn bushes, symbolic of Satan. And the bramble said unto the trees, If in truth you anoint me king over you, then come and put your trust in my shadow. And if not, let fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. Satan tells them, If you want me to rule over you, then you put your trust in my shadow. We are to put our trust in his shadow. Psalm 91. Now therefore, if you have done truly and sincerely, and that you have made Abimelech king, and if you have dwelt well with Jeroboam in his house, and have done unto him according to uh, deserving of his hands, he is revealing his true uh, nature. Uh, I'm just going to end there. I don't want to go into that anymore, but I'm going to go over to Ezekiel um, 17, um, verse 1. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, put forth a riddle, and speak a parable unto the house of Israel. And, and say, Thus say the Lord God, A great eagle with great wings, long wing full of feathers, which had divers colors, came into Lebanon, and took the highest branch of the cedar. Um, and of thy garments thy didst take, and deckest thy places with divers colors, and playest the harlot. Thereupon... Uh, Thereupon, come in, uh, into the Be um, in Lebanon, um, Lebanon known for the uh, Snow Peak Mountains, snow representing a purity, and took the highest branch of the cedar. God's children are to be lowly, humble. God exalts uh, his children. We do not exalt um, ourselves. And he cropped off the top of his young twigs and carried it into the land of traffic, and he set it in the city of merchants. Uh, the merchandising of the Holy Spirit, the resistor of the Holy Spirit. By the multitude of thy merchants, thy have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thy has sinned. Um, therefore, I will cast thee as a profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Uh, 5. And he took also of the seed of the land and planted it in a fruitful field. He placed it by great waters and set it as a willow tree. Uh, he took and it grew, and it became a spreading vine of low stature, whose branches turned toward him, and, and the roots thereof were under him. So it became a vine, and brought forth branches, and shot forth sprigs, whose branches turned towards him, and the roots thereof were under him, this being Lucifer, being exalted. There also was another great eagle, with great wings, with many feathers, and behold, this vine did bend her roots towards him, and shot forth her branches towards him, that he might water it by the furrows of her plantation. This vine did bend her roots towards him, this being Yahweh, that he might water it by the furrows of her plantation, reverencing God as that one who will water it and make it grow. And it was planted in a good soil by great waters, that it might bring forth branches, that it might bear fruit, that it might be a goodly vine, this being that goodly vine. Th say thou, thus say the Lord God, shall it prosper? Shall he not pull up the roots thereof and cut off the fruit thereof, that it wither? It shall wither in all the leaves of her spring, even without great power or many people to pluck it up by the roots thereof. And yea, behold, every 
be implanted, shall it prosper, shall it not utterly wither, when the east wind touches it, it shall wither in the furrows where it grew. That being when the four winds are released, when the spiritual famine comes, that brings the opening up of the supernatural realm, that brings that, the choice between the two saviors. The savior of the flesh, Asclepius, the serpent around the rod, um, that is serpent by, its, by his hiss, his bite, or you look upon his altar, that fiery serpent, the savior of your soul. We will have the, um, the altar of God that will come down from heaven above the head of the cherubims. Everyone um, had four faces. The first face was the face of a cherub. There will be the two angels, the angels um, of Revelation 8, that great star that brought the wormwood, that brought the calamity, that brought the coronavirus, that brought the laws uh, to, the, um, uh, to serve um, that serpent with that hiss. Um, and, um, that is the bite of poison that they will inflict into those that say, serve him. And the angel of the morning, that morning star that will lead you to the fiery serpent over above the head of the cherubims. Cherubims being those that are um, created, not the creator that is above all. And then um, was the two um, man, man in the image of God. Genesis 1 verse 27. And so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female he created um, them. Uh, and man in our image. Verse 20. Um, so God created in 26. And God said let us make man in our image. After our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish. And of the sea. And over the fowl of the air. And upon the cattle. And all the earth. And ever, over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. There's, a two, uh, there's two mans. And then 27. And God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Uh, Savior a man in the image of God um, uh, of the um, right and then the image then the man in the image of man that will save your flesh that being the left the left side of man is the weak side and then there are the two lions there will be um, those that say that they are Jews Judah uh, lion being of the standard of Judah they those that say that they are Jews Judah but lion are the synagogue of Satan and then there will be the true Judah, those that are one in Christ Jesus. And then there will be the two eagles. They want to cast their shadow over you as a protector. You will soon be made to make the, that choice, um, those choices when he comes. When he comes, he will come swiftly because he knows he has but a short time. We are to listen while there's still time. And I'm going to read um, Revelation 13, 15 through 18. And he had power to give life into the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him um, have understanding. Count the number of the beast, for it's the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three, four, and 6. And then I'm going to finish it with Revelation 14, verses 6 through 13. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, that be in Yahweh. For the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image and receive of his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture unto the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever, and they had no rest day nor night who worshiped the beast in his image and whosoever received the mark of his 
his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto him, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works to follow them. And we are going to end this today. Elect, you have a great day until the morning.